Hello there guys and welcome back to another Epic and Extra Maths video. In this video we're looking at hyperbolic functions. Now you've probably never seen hyperbolic functions before. If you have, that is absolutely fantastic. But we're going to go from the absolute basics and this is going to be a sequence of videos helping you out with some hyperbolic functions, looking at their relationship to trigonometry and complex numbers and calculus, differentiation and integration. These things are deeply important, very, very important functions. So what are hyperbolic functions? Well, we've got some definitions down here. Let me scroll down slightly so you can see all of them. We have three things, shine, cosh, and than. Shine x, cosh x, and than x, okay? Now, you might pronounce these differently to how I'm pronouncing them. You might pronounce shine as cinch. You might pronounce cosh as cosh, like no, everyone agrees I think it's cosh. And uh, you, might pronounce, you might pronounce than as tanch. Now, I prefer shine, cosh, than, but I understand if you want to use cinch, cosh, tanch, I get it. So it's really, there is no definitive pronunciation of these things. You can pronounce them however you want because there's no official way to do it. I like shine because I think shine is a really cool word anyway. And cosh is pretty cool. And than, you know, we'll settle for it. It's fine. Doesn't, you know, I'm not exactly a fan of it, but, you know, it is what it is. So what is the point in shine, cosh, and than what do they actually do and why do they have these definitions e to the x minus e to the minus e to the two. that seems so random what's that where's that come from you know where is that and why are they named after trigonometry because they're clearly related to trigonometry like look at the you know it's it's just sine cos tan with a h at the end so what's their relationship to trigonometry because i'm not seeing anything trigonometric about these guys at all and we'll look at the graphs in a, in a minute and you'll also notice that the graphs have got nothing evidently trigonometric about them at all. They're not periodic. They don't look like waves. They look actually a lot like exponential functions, which you would expect. Um, so the first thing that we do, by the way, is we define shine and cosh to be these things. We just define them to be like that. Than comes from doing shine divided by cosh equals than, because you'll notice, and we'll talk about this in future videos, all of the trigonometric identities also hold with some exceptions that we'll talk about but they more or less all hold for the hyperbolic functions there also exists which we will look at in future videos there also exists the inverse hyperbolic functions r shine r cosh r than and the reciprocals and all of the others that you want there's the whole family of trigonometry in here just named after these hyperbolic functions. Now, it turns out that actually these things do not just come out of thin air. They're not just randomly defined, oh, we'll just call shiny e to the x minus e to the minus x over two. Actually, they're deeply related to complex numbers. And we'll look at that later as well. There is a strong connection between these things and normal trigonometry via complex numbers. We're gonna look at all of that. These things are also incredibly important for integration. So you need to know about them if you're trying to integrate some functions, which is quite common. You do get that a lot. So many integrals have, uh, they, they're just standard things and they integrate to particularly uh, the inverse of these functions, just like how lots of integrals integrate to the inverse of the normal trig functions. So things like the integral, let me write this down, the integral, of 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared, for example, that integrates to just arc sine of x plus c, okay? So you have many similar situations with these ones. That are, they're, different, they're different integrals, but they, are, they, they do tend to be standard integrals. You can also use these, just like trig substitution for integration, you can also use these guys for those as well to answer some really difficult integrals. You can do simple substitutions and actually get some nice answers. So let's have a look at the graphs for a second, okay? So let's look at the graphs for shine and cosh and than. So let's do shine first. Okay, so if this is our x and y graph, Shine x looks like this. It almost looks like the graph of y equals x cubed, but it's a bit steeper. But it kind of looks like this, okay? Not the, not the best drawing in the world, but it, that's even worse. It kind of looks like this. And because of the sake that I'm a really bad drawer, I'm gonna chuck up the actual graph on Desmos right now 
so that you can see what it actually looks that this what you're seeing right now is the actual graph of shine x okay that's what it looks like brilliant now let's have a look at the graph of cosh x now cosh x looks a little bit like sort of the graph of y equals x squared plus one it looks like a, a nice u shape going up on both sides like this and like this again I'll chuck up the Desmos graph right now so you can see the proper thing. It goes through the point one on the y-axis um, and we're happy days about that. So that's cosh, okay, that's cosh x. That's y equals cosh x. And finally, than x, which is probably the hardest one to graph because, I mean, look at the definition of than x. It's e to the 2x minus 1 over e to the 2x plus 1. So the first thing that we can do is look at when this thing is equal uh, to zero or what happens when x is zero when x is zero we end up with a one minus one over two situation which means that we are uh, at the point zero zero so it goes through zero zero and then what we need to do is look at the behavior of this graph as x gets larger well as x gets large this thing actually just approaches um, the number one because e to the two times infinity minus one is the same as e to the two times infinity plus one. So you end up basically uh, in an informal way with uh, infinity uh, divided by infinity and it tends, it's just, it's one. You can do, you can properly evaluate it, but it's one. And when x is very large and negative, it goes to minus one. And so r th um, or than rather looks like this. And there's asymptotes um, at one and at minus one and again I'm going to chuck up the actual graph so you can see it properly but that's than okay brilliant so this is the idea behind uh, hyperbolic functions they're really important we'll look at lots more about them in the future videos you know their Maclaurin series expansions and how they relate to complex numbers and integrals and all of that stuff we'll look at all of it but this is the rundown basically of what a hyperbolic function is they're really important I can't I can't stress it enough so anyways guys thank you so much for watching I highly appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video cheers